I want predictions. The more specific you get on your game one kickoff prediction, the better. And we're going to get some predictions on that, the Super Bowl. I want to see the ring. Don't show it yet. Eric Weddle. Don't, don't show it. All right, joining the show after this. Woo! Our next guest, I mean, looking at that footage is insane. You spent a combined 13 seasons with the Chargers, the Ravens, and the Rams before you decided to hang it up, and then you gloriously unhung it up and unretired to become a Super Bowl champion. Please welcome the newest member of the Up and Adams family, two-time All-Pro safety and Super Bowl champion, Eric Weddle. How are you? I'm doing great. Hey, great to see you. So great to see you. You'll be uh, you'll be coming on every week. No perfect day. Then today, of course, to talk about uh, sort of everything that's been going on. Uh, but I got to talk about the ring because I, we asked you for a little show and tell. Yeah. I have not seen it yet. Show me this bad boy. Yeah, let me show you. It's right on my uh, right by my office. There you go. Uh, and, uh, does see it open it up? It's got a, a pop top I'm, uh, or something. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that is insanity. Now, when you look at there that, goes. Yeah. when you look at that, that, your decision to return from retirement was a fairy tale ending, how it all went down, all of that. What, what's the story? How did that all go down? Holy smokes. Uh, I try to, to keep it short. A lot of uh, emotional roller coaster over a, a six, six hour period. And to, I just got done interviewing at the local high school uh, with the athletic director to take over uh, this upcoming season in January. And I see a missed call from Raheem Morris, the defense yeah. coordinator. And I call him back. I thought it was odd. And we're, we're uh, shooting the breeze. And he eventually asks, you're not fat and out of shape, are you? <laughs> and I, I kind of chuckled and, and thought to myself, well, I'm, I'm definitely not, but I'm not the same guy I was two years ago. And uh, then he asked, you think you'd give us 15, 20 snaps uh, Monday night? This was Tuesday afternoon. And I'm like, what? I, I seriously, like, am I the best option you guys could think of? Uh, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, so many things happen for a reason. And you look back over the course of 15 years, 13 years playing, then two years retired, and then obviously coming back. Everything happens for a reason sometimes. And to come back to this moment and to join a squad that was on the brink of something special and, and to add a little uh, little energy, a little passion, and a little, a little something this old man could muster up in the playoffs uh, resulted in a Super Bowl, Super Bowl win, which we're entrenched in history now. And then you hung it up again, I think. We'll get to all <laughs> yeah. of that. We'll get to Definitely re-retired, we'll re-retired, re baby. A little bit. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk about this year's Rams. You were with them up close and personal, of course. It's so incredible and so emotional. And Sean Payton used the word exhausting that I thought was really interesting earlier this week to describe the path of trying to get back after the, the highs and lows and then, of course, the highs of winning a Super Bowl throughout the offseason. A uh, lot of Super Bowl predictions out there, my friend. Not a lot of them have the Rams winning it. There's, of course, the... Hangover, everyone talks about that. What's your forecast for them this year? I, I, I think they're as, as talented and as deep as, as they were last year and, and over the past couple of years. The thing that, that I stressed uh, to Sean after, after everything came down and the high of winning the Super Bowl is just giving the guys freedom, giving the guys time away, right? It's, it's a, a long season that, that they went through from mid-July all the way to mid-February. And just to like get their minds off football and get their bodies recharged. And you still want that drive. You still want that focus and, and the persistence of excellence, right? That's what they preach. We, not me. And the, the way to do that is to let them get away. So they mm. did that. And I think they're geared up to defend our title, man. Like, I love that, that we're kind of going under the, under the radar. In we, a sense. we, yeah, I'm still part of them. Yeah. I'm, hey, what, what, until there's a new champion, I'm part of that defending champion team. So we, each week, yes, we are defending our title. My name's in there. Yeah. I was in there starting yeah. and, and, and uh, helping that team win. So, so then what does Von Miller say? Because he's going up against that, you know, like. How does no, he, he's, <laughs> on, he, he's still playing and he's on a different team. So 
Uh, Doesn't he'll, work. He'll, uh, hopefully he won't create too much havoc. It's early on the season. He'll probably be feeling his way through it, not be going 100%. Probably save that for the playoffs. So we'll, we should be good. We should be able to handle him tonight. Uh, what do you think the Rams will miss most about not having Von Miller there? It's, you know, you, you get around special guys that are elite, that are Hall of Fame type guys. Man, they're, they're so unique. They're so special. And more so what they bring to on the field, it's it's the leadership. It's the how they bring guys together, how they're, uh, you know, the personalities are contagious, the energy, their passion. The, every great player I've been around loves football. They love the grind. They love practice. Mm -hmm. They love competing. And I think they'll miss that. But, you know, it was before Vaughn got there, A.D., Jalen, they have guys in leadership roles. They added B Wag. Love him. Uh, so I, I think they'll miss that aspect. But it's time uh, for those guys to to take over in that special leadership role. And and seeing AD two years removed from my last year, seeing how much he's grown, how more vocal he is with his teammates, it, it was just an incredible ride. And obviously, you can't. Uh, replace what he did on the field but i think they'll be fine the culture the team uh in that aspect they have the leadership to 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 hold the grounds and and move forward so specifically tonight and and as a safety and you have so much experience and you're the best person to ask this to what is it like and get as specific as possible to go up against an offense that's led by josh allen well, you know, I played him when he was a rookie when I was in Baltimore, and, and he had his struggles. But there were moments in that game where you're just like, man, this guy's a, a big dude. I remember him scampering for like 20, 25 yards on us in the fourth quarter, and uh, you saw glimpses. And the thing that presents so much, uh, so many problems and issues as is the defense is you could, you could have a great call. You can have a great coverage. You can have a free runner at the quarterback, and he could just make you miss. He could just – throw you down, extend the play, mm -hmm. and either run or throw it. And it's just, it's hard enough to cover uh, for three, four seconds. And then now you're, you're extending the play and trying to guard those, the receivers they got and the tight end and in the system. It's, it's not easy. What's it like Definitely trying to tackle easy. him? Uh, you know, I, I, with bigger dudes, honestly, I felt like they're, they're easier to tackle. Then the little quick shifty muscle, you know, big dudes that can run you over or juke you. So with him, it's it's kind of just understanding where your help is and and using the sideline. If you're on the sideline, don't let him cut back across your face. And and when you when you wrap up, just hold on for dear life and know that your teammates are running for you. Like yeah. at the end of the day, you just got to get them down. It doesn't matter if you get ran over, trucked, trampled. If you get them down and you live to fight another day, that. That's, that's the goal at the end of the day. Yeah, survive in advance. And I'm asking you this, uh, and, and we'll get your pick before we, we finish, because I want to transition into a shifty guy who's hard to bring down, one that, you know, you played against Josh Allen when Josh Allen was a rookie. You played with Lamar Jackson, right? Yeah. When he was mm -hmm. a rookie. Uh, yeah. And then you got to, you got got by him, let's just be honest, because you were so honest about it. Did during I? <laughs> Did we all? That was a... a, a might have been the, the biggest destruction of a game I've ever been a part of at any level when the Ravens destroyed our souls. Okay, talk to me that, about this. It was, a regular, it was a regular season game. And listen, like, players are honest and open, but these quotes are, they're hilarious but terrifying. <laughs> we got our faces peeled off. You admitted that you didn't know. You, Eric Weddle, you didn't know where the ball was. You don't know who had the ball. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna ask you like, here's what I wanna ask you. Cause everyone's, you know, we, sure. we all know how great he is. You played with him his rookie season. You faced him his MVP season. What have you noticed about his growth as a player that I think the Ravens should consider when they're talking about giving him this deal? Well, I mean, he's a winner at the end of the day. Uh, that speaks of volumes above any stat, any throw, any run. He leads and he's a winner. So uh, that's that's hard to replace if you're looking into the future of of the most important position. What he's done on the field uh, is second to none. With the wins and losses, and obviously the element of how he's played over the course of the last you know four years is just impressive. And he brings so much to the table, both throwing and running. Uh, you know, I, I don't I don't get the whole 
uh, he's got to throw from the pocket and he's got to do this and he's got to do that. Lamar just needs to be Lamar. Yeah. Because we've seen when, when he does that and they surround him with the right system and the right players and let him be him, he's one of one. And, and that there's no denying that. And it right. puts defenses in a very base vanilla defense, having to cover all these different things. Uh, so, but is I, I he okay? So I don't. You, the one of one I like, but I also don't like it, right? Because we have to. How do we pay him? How do we? It, he gets put into his own category. You have all the great quarterbacks, and Lamar is just sort of doing his own thing. You didn't know where the ball was, Eric Weddle. Let's remember. <laughs> no, seriously. Let's remember you in that game. Is Lamar Jackson one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League? Of course, when he's healthy, when he's healthy and and doing and playing the style of football that he wants, that he's needs to play, that means running and throwing, right? Like, if I'm Lamar and I'm Lamar's coach, I'm playing Lamar that is the best version of Lamar. I'm not trying to morph him and do something that that maybe isn't him, you know? Obviously, you got to get consistent and throwing outside the numbers and consistent vertical throws. And when defenses get tight in the fourth quarter and especially tight in the playoffs, you have to be able to make those timing throws, yeah. right? But at the end of the day, I'm not I'm not trying to change Lamar. So when you're talking about contracts and, and what do you value him as, uh, that's between right. obviously Lamar and the Ravens. And but I, I know they value him it's big at the to, highest yeah. aspect. We, we're sorry, we're coming up against the gun here, but I want to get more no, off right. some of your predictions. But I, I, just th- I have seen him grow. I have seen yeah. him grow even as far as – progress as a passer I've seen that every year I've seen his deep ball is better I've seen him reading defenses better year in year out and that comes with those wins and I just hope the Ravens are considering that what do you in your best guess what happens here with Lamar this season yeah I mean I I don't think that by any means the Ravens don't value Lamar as one of the top guys in this league yeah and it's just Lamar probably thinks he's valued at this and the Ravens aren't there. And so they'll either agree to make it happen or they won't and he'll play it this year. And then going in next year, they'll try to negotiate again. If they can't, they'll just franchise him and, and move on from there. So uh, it's, it's not like he's not going to play. He's going to get out there. He's going to have a great year this year. High expectations for the Ravens, obviously. So we'll see what happens. Who wins tonight? The Rams. Oh! Oh, your lights are out. Uh Uh Uh-oh. Just go for it. (laughs) You're still on. You're still on, though. Oh, boy. Go Uh, for it. Yeah, Rams. Uh, (laughs) There's obviously a lot of talk about the Bills. Rightfully so. they got a deep, talented roster, great coaching staff. But uh, it's hard to go against the champ, and it's hard to go against the the king of the mountain. And uh, I think Moot. Losing their two corners on defense and, and the inexperience there going against this offense is going to be a tough challenge. They can manage the game, manage the ebbs and flows and the emotions of just coming back as the defending champs and play our game. I, I don't see why uh, we can't win tonight, so, which which I expect them to do so. I do too, Sean McVay, undefeated in season openers. So they've got Ooh. the advantage. They're at home. They're hot. Uh the elbow thing everyone's sort of talking about, We all, it was very, you know, not talked about in the media world, which is weird because we love to latch onto everything and like take every little bit of juice out of it. In that <laughs> locker room last year, as it's been, we, we all now know that it was something that was affecting him that he worked through, which is incredible that he won a Super Bowl and the elbow wasn't 100%, just completely incredible. How large did that play in the locker room? Like, was it talked about? Was it, was it uh, ever, you know, how big did that loom in that locker room for the season? Because it's so much adversity to go through, it's amazing. Yeah, I, I, you know, I was only around Matt for, you know, five weeks. Yep. And he was in a lot of pain every day. No one's denying that. He's He's been, he said that last season was a trying year. But one thing I know about Matt is he's one of the toughest dudes I've ever been around. And uh, as a team, you know, no matter what goes on throughout the week, how many throws he does or doesn't throw, how many reps he does and doesn't get, He's going to come out there and be great on set, on Sundays for you. I and love that. All right, there's now, no I, denying that. There's no denying his preparation. He's in there with Cooper at 530, and they're wow. there till the end of the night. Like, they're going to be on their P's and Q's. They're going to know ins and outs of what the what the adjustments are, what it's our checks, what's our protections, all the stuff that goes into it. And the last thing you're worried about is his elbow. He's going to push through any type of pain. He did it the last season, the entire season, led us to a Super Bowl. 
Uh, it may not be different, maybe a long season, but that's reality. After week one, everyone's hurt. Everyone's banged up. You're just managing your body at that point to try to get yourself ready to play on Sunday. Yeah, it's just what happens down the stretch. Of course, they want to repeat as Super Bowl champions. They're built to win again, and that elbow is something we're all going to be keeping our eye on. Uh, quickly, you went to Florida, I understand. A little Conrad told me this, uh, to see Utah versus Florida last Saturday night. But on Friday, you got to watch your buddy play against my favorite NFL player of all time, Philip Rivers. <laughs> no, so my, my buddy moved out there, and he has three boys, and his oldest is... Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> we're, we're a working show. Eric, we, we I don't saw that. Who I knows? saw it flash up, and I was trying I to read know. it mid-sentence. Mid uh, Go for it. My buddy's oldest son is a senior at St. Michael's uh, High School, where Philip coaches. So I was able to go out there and uh, watch them play and, and catch up with Phil and uh, see the boys play. So it was a, it was a great weekend, other than my youths uh, not pulling through when they, when they had the game won. So... I but we'll it. bounce back. Long season. So what Long do you season. do? Are you like driving the kids to school? Like what is, what is your day filled with now? Yes. Waking up about six ish, wake my oldest up, get her ready, take her to uh uh it's kinda like a Bible study class at seven before high school starts and then wow. come back, then I take the little girls to elementary, then I come back and then I take my oh, my second son, he's in seventh grade. My oh, only son, but the second in line. And I take him at 8, and I'm back here about 8.15. Honeydews, taxi service, make dinner, coach 14 u football, take over the high school in January, and uh, coming oh, wow. on with you every Thursday. What What is the honeydew list today? I must know. What's, what's on the list? I got to take out the trash. I got <laughs> to, uh, you know, I vacuumed yesterday, so that's good. I got to make sure everything's ready for this weekend because – I'm going up to the University of Utah for the Hall of Fame. I'm getting inducted to the Hall of Fame up there. So pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, Congratulations. No, 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 it's That's no, amazing. Nothing crazy, but got to make sure my team and the coaches understand they got the play sheet and audibles and checks for my little 14 team this uh, this upcoming Saturday. So a lot to do in a little Everyone in the studio is cracking up that you're vacuuming, and I just really hope you have a <laughs> minivan. It's, it's very Mrs. <laughs> Doubtfire of you, and I love it. Uh, Eric Weddle, you are amazing. Great insight. appreciate you answering the questions, and I'm just love so, it. so happy to have you on the show. Thank you. That's going to be great. Can't wait. A Hall of Famer already. All right, Eric Weddle. Edub said our title. We will see him week 14. Oh, are there odds on FanDuel that uh, Eric Weddle comes back? Maybe a little 2-1 odds. 15? He's back. Bye, Eric.